Hey there guys and welcome back to the Creative Life Studios. So today we're going to be playing with the co-branded Ranger and Gel Press gel plate and some alcohol inks also by Ranger. Um, to start this project, uh, I am just dotting my surface with some greens and a yellow and I will add those colors down in the bottom for you. Um, and I'm just using my brayer to lightly move them across the surface. I'm not doing full brayers because I don't want to risk moving them around too much. And while while they're wet, I'm adding some slight dots of other colors that are a little bit darker and a little bit different. Um, and what that's going to do on that wet surface, you can see how fun is that. It's just naturally going to bloom um, on the wet surface of that gel plate and give it just this kind of more organic kind of feeling and I kind of zoomed in a little bit so you can kind of see how it's moving around there and um, I liked this technique because it was less about me forcing it to try to do something and more about it kind of just doing it naturally since I had a heavier layer I was going I went ahead and kind of I don't know, batted my hand around on it to make sure that it was dry. And of course, I'm putting the lids back on all of my alcohol inks because um, girlfriend here has made the mistake of not doing that and has knocked it over. And so, um, yeah, don't want to do that. So if you're not familiar with this technique, um, you um, are going to learn something really cool today. Um, the way to lift alcohol ink off of your gel press plate is super easy. You're going to take a light colored, preferably light colored acrylic paint, um, and you're going to just brayer a very light coat on top of your exposed alcohol inks. Your goal is to be able to see those inks through your layer, so you might have to brayer some off or so. And then you can see there I'm actually using um, a large Joggles acrylic plate um, to kind of turn my gel press plate into a stamp. And just like a regular acrylic stamp, it's not permanent. I'll be able to just remove that whenever I want to either place it back in the clamshell or use it for a different project. So I've kind of pressed it down a little bit and then I'm just gently peeling it back and come on, isn't that glorious? Look how it just peels up and my plate is beautifully clean. And I absolutely love the way this background turned out. I think it's funky. I think it's organic and kind of graphic. Um, and I love this technique. And what's great is because I've used so little materials, it's all dry already. So I can go ahead and move on to the next step that I want to do. My next step is going to be adding a layer of kind of fronds, I guess would be the correct word, palm leaves maybe. Um, what's kind of funny is this stencil is actually from the Crafters Workshop and I'll put the link for it down below. And then I'm just using a sponge and acrylic paint on it. And then I'm just gonna dry it in between so it doesn't get like sticky and messy and that kind of stuff. Um, but you can see the stencil is actually from one that has a flamingo and a pineapple, um, not exactly exactly very um, adventy, I guess, um, but we're kind of using an abnormal scripture for today's um, Advent uh, Bible journaling. We're actually in Mark 11, and we're using verses 8 through 10. I mean, this is actually commonly in the Christian world known as the triumphal entry, um, where Jesus rides in on a donkey and people are shouting Hosanna and laying palm fronds and spreading their clothes on the road to protect him. And it's kind of his moment in the sun, for lack of a better word. And so um, I wanted to do this as something a little bit abnormal because I've really been thinking lately about yes Christmas is amazing we love baby Jesus um, but just really about this idea that without Christmas we wouldn't have Easter which is the whole basis for our belief and our salvation and 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 that you know our whole faith system and so I wanted to take a minute and not forget that during this kind of busy season, this season where we can all get unfocused. And so um, I kind of am going with this idea of um, the title or the words that we'll do at the end, say, finding the love of God at Christmas brings the hope of God at Easter. And so again, I know it's super weird to um, be doing this kind of scripture as an Advent uh, entry. Um, but for me personally, I just wanted to spend some time just focusing on um, what's most important and remembering that 
yes, this is a beautiful time. It's a time of sharing. It's a time when God shared his, the gift of his son with the world. Um, but it was, it's more important than that, that without, without Christmas, we wouldn't have Easter. So without his birth, we wouldn't have his death and salvation. So I just thought that was really important to, for me personally, just to document and focus on right now. So right now I'm just taking a Faber-Castell Pit Artist pen with a bullet tip um, and just kind of adding some shading and a little bit of definition to my leaves just so they weren't so static and green and fading into the background because I felt like the greens and browns I used blended a little more than I wanted them to. So I'm not really trying to redraw them. I'm just adding some texture and adding some lines. And then here comes the hard part. And so I sped it up quite a bit. Um, I could not figure out for the life of me the best way to um, get my words in there. And so you can see I'm in there with a pencil and the stencils I'm going to be using and kind of plotting things out and then erasing them because I didn't like them. And so I think I went through like four different layouts. I was like, maybe I should start from the top. Maybe I should start from the bottom. What do I really want it to say? How many words do I need? And, um, <coughs> excuse me. And so, um, this is just a, um, uh, inside my brain of it's not always as easy as the final project or the final product always um, ends up being sometimes it's a uh, chasing yourself around trying to figure out what works and again these are some crafters workshop stencils that I am using with sponge and just some black acrylic paint I was going to do brown but I felt like that would fade in too much and I really wanted to make sure that the the title and the words were super important, so I wanted them to stand out. And so I'm using actually two different stencils. Weirdly enough, the words love and the word hope were on none of my stencils, um, on the same stencil. So I had to use two different ones. Um, and so there's that. I think they are both Rebecca Myers, but I'm not 100% sure. I'll double check on that for you guys. And again, I'll make sure to have a complete list down below. So um, if you wanted to recreate this, you totally could. So I am erasing my words and trying to, once again, figure out the best way to do this. And so I thought I would go in and, oh, I'm changing my title once again for like the third or fourth time. Again, just showing you what it's really like sometimes. <laughs> um, I'm surely I'm not the only one. Comment below if I'm not the only one who goes through like four different ideas in one particular project. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's my creative brain going this, then this. It's like that meme that says, you want to know a creative's brain? Imagine Internet Explorer with 320 tabs open and you have no idea where the music's coming from. That's my brain. Um, so I was going in with my favorite sh gel Sharpie um, I kinda, as I use for a lot of my finishing touches. And I really felt like it wasn't really um, as bold as it needed to be, especially to compensate and go with the brightness of the and the darkness and the boldness of the other two words. Um, so um, I pulled out some black paint and a thin brush and did something I don't normally have never, might never do again, and that is to paint um, all of those words with black acrylic paint. Um, I'm not a fancy hand letterer. Um, I wish I could. I've tried a few times. I don't know if I'm not using the right materials or if I don't have patience. It could be all of the above, but I've never been really good at that. So I'm really just kind of just tracing over the words I had written in pencil with a thin brush and some black acrylic paint to kind of make sure they're bold and just the girls just doing her best trying to make it look pretty. And um, again, I know this is non-traditional. The colors are non-traditional for an advent. The theme is non-traditional. The verses are non-traditional. Um, but hey, I have pink hair. I'm pretty non-traditional, I guess. Um, and I just like this idea. So I'm just continuing to finish up my lettering there. Um, and it took quite a long time because I'm slow and it's hand lettering-ish. Um, I think this entire project total took me about an hour. 
Um, I think it's kind of important and I want to try to do that more where I tell you how long it actually took um, because yes, this is in a I don't know, 10 to 12 minute video, um, but I think it's really important that for you to kind of have a good grasp on um, how long it actually takes. So I'm going to make a point of putting that in my videos more for you. Um, and now I'm just taking a white pen and just making those letters pop a little bit. Um, so they are um, popping off that dark surface in the background, which I still love the background. It feels very organic, very free flowing, and I am loving it. Um, I'm also going to accent the word God on both of them. Um, again, just to give it more oomph and just add some scribbles because everything's better with scribbles. And I kind of over painted on a couple. Oh, no, I realized I forgot a word. I completely forgot the of on the of God part on the bottom. I was like, well, at least I noticed that before I finished it up and look like a big old dork who can't put a sentence together. So I was going to continue to add some white and I realized it just, it looked dorky. And so I'm just going to leave all the rest of the words solid white and just not overdo it. I think my brain was just trying to overthink it, which, you know, we all can do. And so we are pretty close to done. I'm just going to highlight the scriptures that I'm using over on the opposite page and kind of leave it naked. Normally I'll do a little bit of decorating, but I'm not going to. I'm also going to go ahead and just add some little scribbles to the other side just so it feels a little more finished. And we are done once we add the date. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I will see you guys next time. <laughs>